<laughs> if you really believe that this was going to save your life and make your life work, and I really believe that, attention would be the last worry that any of us would have in this room, right? So us believing it isn't necessary. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. That my believing this isn't necessary. Mm -hmm. But what I do need to do is show that I have some willingness. And my saying, I dedicate all thought to union, is showing oh. spirit, God, the universe, I am willing. I am open. I'm ready to have that new experience. I wasn't just talking again like I've done in the past. I'm actually willing to do something that's symbolic of my willingness to have my life be different. The physical act is nothing but a symbolic gesture to show you not jiving. Uh, there was a book that, in this other book that I'm reading that's blowing my mind called The Holy Spirit's Interpretation of the New Testament. Uh, it, there's a statement in there where the uh, uh, Spirit says, to hear what I say, to listen what I say, listen, to listen to what I say and then agree with what I say without practicing what I said means that you didn't hear what I said. Mm -hmm. oh. say to agree with what you're hearing me say to listen to what I'm saying and agree with it. Like a lot of people listen to it and say, I agree with it. But, did, but to not practice it means you did not, you did not hear it. Or, wow. or agree. Like, or really agree. Like, wow. so, but but I, I used to do that all the time. I would, listen, I would go to classes and I'd listen to stuff and I'd go, oh yeah, I agree with that. But I wouldn't practice it. And he, says, it's, he says, that's not to hear it. I did not hear it. At the point that I really hear it and agree with it, I'll do it. So to say I'm agreeing with something that I'm not practicing means I haven't heard it yet. So that's a powerful statement Jeez. people use just to blow people off. That's a powerful statement they use to blow themselves off, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's rampant in spiritual New Age communities. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, you know, everybody's agreeing that thought is created and we're in the sun and we're all one, right? right. But then to, for me to actually walk out of here tonight and say, I'm upset about something and go, I dedicate all thought to union. That would mean I heard that tonight. But if somebody makes me mad and I go, it's your fault, you do this to me all the time, I didn't hear what was said tonight. Because now I'm going back to my old way of handling things, which is to project and to blame right, right. and to attack. Doesn't mean I'm guilty, doesn't mean I'm bad. It means I, didn't hear, I haven't heard it yet. 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 And think about this too. How could you feel guilty about a desire that you don't feel guilty about? Wait, one more time. <laughs> How could you feel guilty about a desire that you don't feel guilty about? Like a lot of times people will tell me something that they desire and something they like to have and they feel guilty about it. Well, the mere fact that they feel guilty about it is telling them that they're going to punish themselves for doing it before they even do it. So anytime you say you want something and you feel guilty about it, just know that you are going to punish yourself when you give yourself that thing. Because you already feel like it's bad and wrong before you even had it. So let's say you have a desire to have, let's say, a sexual experience. But just the thought of that makes you feel shame and guilt. Don't do it. Not because it's necessarily sinful or bad, you're gonna kick your butt about it because you've already t let yourself know you don't feel innocent about doing that, so you're gonna punish yourself before you even do it. So there's unity. Doesn't that mean that you don't? Huh? So there is unity there. In what way? In the fact that you make yourself feel guilty about something you desire. That's right. It's unity between you and that desire. Is it unity in the world of, of fear? Chaos? There is, there is un there's unity in the sense that it's a shared belief system. But it's not unity in the sense that, it, that fear joins you. Because what fear really does is separate you. Fear makes you separate from each other. I mean, we might all be in the same room, but if we're afraid of each other, we're not really consciously joined with each other. You know? um, so we're sharing a common belief system that we're separate. That's what, that's what we all have in common at the level of the body. We think we're separate. So that's the unity. The unity is in we're sharing the same belief system. The unity is in we might all think we're bodies. The unity is we might all believe we need to eat. The unity is in the thought of separation and all the things that result from the thought of separation. And that's not bad. That's just an experience that we chose to have. But we made one little error 
We injected the idea of sin and guilt. Instead of having the experience, and then just having the experience, because we still know that we're one, but now we have diversity in the way that we express ourselves, we could have a lot of fun with that. But then we judge it, and so then none of us really let ourselves enjoy this marvelous experience of what appears to be differences. Because we're crucifying each other for being different. <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. You know, the person that comes in here with polka dot purple hair, who doesn't do it like everybody else, there would be a temptation to judge them. But, do, but then we said we came here so we could experience differences and diversity sure. and uniqueness. And right. Then when somebody actually do it, we crucify the heck out of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so the first step toward unity would be me not judging you for your individual expression of who you are. I like to be around people who are edgy. I love to be around people. <laughs> Normal people are completely predictable. Right. So there's not a lot of surprise with them. You know, it's like they've accepted the official script of what they've been told they should want, how they should act, what they should do. So they're following the script. And because they're following the script, you know what's going to happen before they even do it. There's no surprises. You meet somebody that's trying to express their individual expression of who they are, then you never know when the rap is going to pop out the hat. And they're always satisfying and thrilling because you know you won't say to with each other. So you're not worried about whatever the expression is being something that wants to hurt you. But since you don't know exactly what it's going to be, it's exciting. So in, in a sense, if I want to have an exciting life, I've got to be edgy. I've got to be willing to do a little risk. I've got to be willing to do some things that everybody else may not always understand or approve of. Mm. Nice. But it's really interesting though, how, right. how sometimes people who are the most dull and routine want the most exciting people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that? That, that? that sometimes the people who will tell you they want the most exciting people in the world are the ones who don't do anything exciting. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't realize exciting people attract exciting people. <laughs> fun exactly. people yeah. attract fun people. <laughs> you know? But the, it's like, I'm going to be quiet, and I'm not going to speak to anybody at the party, and I'm not going to smile at anybody, and I'm not going to talk to anybody, and I'm going to shrink over in the corner, and I'm going to even judge what I'm seeing them do. And then I wonder why when I leave, I say, I didn't have any fun at that party, and nobody <laughs> came over and talked to me. <laughs> and you see people do that. You know, oh, yeah. that, because they don't realize that they're, what they're giving is what they're asking for. People are not seeing an inviting energy, and they don't respond. But they feel like people weren't friendly. And I say, well, how many people did you go up and speak to? When people say that to me, I always say, well, people weren't friendly at the party. Who did you speak to? Who did you talk to? Who did you introduce? Nobody. They just should have come over to me. <laughs> you know, or people who want to have a relationship who never leave home. Right? In other words, the person of your dreams, the FedEx is going to like drop the ball. <laughs> They're just going like, to show up at your door. You know? It's like, I, and I'm talking about myself because I used to do all that crazy yeah. stuff. And they would wonder why my life wasn't working and think people were not there for me. I wasn't there for anybody. It was all about me. It's great. This was really cool. I'm, I'm so glad now that I can forgive myself for what I never, for what I didn't do, actually. Because you're all innocent. We didn't know. We were, we were acting according to the thought system we had. You know, Laura, did you have your hand up a second ago? No. You didn't? Okay. I had a question about if you're feeling guilty about something, you probably don't really want it. Is that true? I think that's true, too. I think so. Elaborate on it from your point of view. Like how does that seem like that to you? I don't feel guilty anymore about a lot of stuff I used to feel guilty about, so I can't think of an example. Uh -huh. But I think that when I did, I really didn't want it. I was pushing it away because I felt that way. Isn't that interesting? Either I was pushing it away or I was accepting it and then punishing myself for it. That was the way I was dealing with my stuff. It was either I felt really, really guilty, so I better not do that, or I felt really, right. really guilty, and I do it and then make myself feel guilty about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and I used to mistake the feeling of guilt for the feeling of pleasure. Right. So the thing I felt the most guilty about was the thing I would call my greatest pleasure. 
but I was really just taking pleasure in my guilt. Wow. 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 You know? Yeah. So when you really have an experience without guilt, it's so much beyond, so much, so far beyond any.